Hola, y'all. Yes, darkness again. It's basketball season, but I also have a sick kid at home. And today has just been really tied up with that. So, we're here. Happy Thursday. I still have to go do a, some more stuff. But I want to jump right into it. Probably not going to take a long time. I do think this uh, message is incredibly important. So, let's hit it. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5 and 6. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. And thou, add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee. And that reprove means reprimand you, get on to you. And thou be found a liar. Let me give you my thoughts. I think that is very ignorant and arrogant of us to add things to God's word. And I actually want to say that again. I think it's very ignorant, but I also think it's incredibly arrogant for us to add things to God's word. Why do we think that we know more than what God inspired to be written by men of old? Why do we think that we are more knowledgeable? Why do we think that we have some sort of inside track? Why do we feel the need to add our two cents into God's word? It's this adding and removing of the word in our lives that has created liars among us and stumbling blocks for the world. And I know I said a mouthful and that's what I wrote, but that I mean it. Like I have so many, connect I have several, connecting scriptures. I'll go to Revelation for you. If anyone adds to the words in this book, God will add to him the plagues that are also found in this book. And if anyone takes away words from the book, God will also take away his share of the tree of life. In other words, your salvation is on the line if you take away stuff from the Bible. Your standing with the Lord is on the line if you add things to his word that are not in his word. Go to Deuteronomy. You better not add or take away from the commandments or the word of God. And there were so many more. I just didn't have room to write them all. The word of God. So I started writing some more. The word of God is perfect. Perfect. It's infallible. And no part of it should be neglected or regarded as less important. So that's kind of hinting at the, the verse that says... Don't take anything away because there are plenty of people who want to take one scripture and completely omit an entire book or an entire chapter or an entire scripture and say, yeah, but I'm, I'm uncomfortable with that. I don't want to change my lifestyle to match that or I don't agree with that or I don't interpret that that way, which the, the whole interpretation thing is, is can be interesting. I'm not going to touch that here. But they, they don't mind taking, I say they as in people, not one particular group. I, I'm saying we all do this. Like at some level, this is just like a plague among us. We feel like we have the license to take a scripture we like and that already applies to our life. We love to hold on to scriptures that we feel like we're already fulfilling. Have you noticed that? And we kind of shy away from scriptures that would require us to change or that we are uncomfortable with because we really don't want to try to do those. They might be really difficult for us or they might cost us something or they might be sacrificial in nature or we just kind of like brush over them. We go, we skirt past them. We don't read those scriptures. We don't read those books. We don't read those chapters. We don't talk about those. We don't have discussions about those. We would rather stay in a land that's way more comfortable for us and stick to things that we think we're doing right. Okay, but the word of God is perfect and none of it has to, it can be neglected. As a matter of fact, lots of people all throughout history have made the mistake of staring at one set of laws for so long that they began to neglect the other. That's actually a huge issue that Jesus had with the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the religious people of the day is that they were so concerned with the law that they didn't know the God of law. Like they didn't know him personally. They just wanted to make sure they just hammered everybody with that law. Like it was unforgiving and there was no mercy in it. And, and, and they even distorted the law, but they didn't allow it to penetrate, which was the reason for the law. 
So even in your quest to do good and to do right, you can completely miss the mark if you if you hone in too quickly or too long on one thing and you don't look at the word as a whole. So if you, I mean, I'm trying to think of another example off the top of my head for you, just to give you some more context. I know you know what I'm saying, but I wanted to bring it down to our terms. So let's just say that you are like really zealous about, you don't like lying. I don't either. Let's just say like, that's your thing. Like you cannot stand it when someone lies. And so you really dedicate your life to making sure you tell the truth. And, and that's, that's great. But you are so focused on this thing and it matters to you so much that lying to you is just like incredibly difficult to be around and it's hard for you to forgive. Like you hone, like that, you hone in on it. Like that's your thing. And you're so hyper-focused on that one thing. And then, so in your life, you begin to let other things slide because you don't regard them as damaging or as sinful or as terrible as lying because lying to you is just horrible. And of course, I'm giving you this hypothetical situation, but y'all, this really happens. Have you ever heard that saying that people make um, mountains out of molehills? People have a tendency to make other people's sins. And I'm going to say sins because some of them are sins, but some of them are just differences of opinion. They have a tendency to make other people's discrepancies, sins, or, or ways of living, whatever, like huge, like, ah, oh, it's horribly wrong. That's a really big deal, whatever. And they minimize the things in their life. They minimize the discrepancies in their life. They, they don't see their sin as very big, or they don't see they don't see themselves with the right lens. And, and and that can happen to all of us if we become singularly focused on one area of God's word and not take it all. The same Ten Commandments that said not to kill, it also said not to covet. Uh-oh. But nobody wants to talk about coveting. What is coveting? Oh, I'll help you out. <laughs> coveting is when you want somebody else's stuff. But I know you might say, well, that's not me. Well... In 2023, we have phrases like keeping up with the Joneses, but even that's kind of went out of style. So coveting is just a symptom of you being dissatisfied because you're trying to keep up appearances. You feel like you need to have the best of something. You need to have, you need to have the latest item that has come out. You need this because it gives you um, validation in some way. It gives you meaning. It gives you worth and value, which is really the sad part about it. That's why God doesn't like it. It's not just that it's vain. It's that it signals a much deeper problem in your heart. And that is that you have not found your worth in God, but you have found your worth in the opinions of other people. And so now you covet things in order to get validation from them. You maybe, maybe you covet things that are really pretty. Maybe you covet things that are really expensive. Maybe you covet things that are whatever. Or maybe your life isn't what you wanted it to be. Maybe things, you're not financially where you want to be. Or maybe your marriage isn't what you wanted it to always to be. Maybe your children are not acting the way that you really would want them. Whatever. We can take these things and we can look around and all of a sudden, without warning, in our heart, we can start coveting. I wish I had that. I wish my husband did that. Oh, God. I wish my wife looked like that. I wish my wife would do that. I wish my children behaved like that. I wish, I wish, if it is referring to someone else's belongings... And no, we know that you're not saying, oh, I really want Mary Jane's shoes. I want those shoes on your brain. Oh, I want those shoes. I would do, I would knock her over the head to get those shoes. No. And I think we excuse ourselves from coveting because we say, oh, I don't covet. I don't want her shoes. I'd love to have a pair just like them. Okay. There is a root cause for coveting. And that is why it's, a ten, it's one of the Ten Commandments. And coveting is actually used in the New Testament as a wonderful illustration because it's something that there's no law against it. You can't see it. The only people who know about coveting, there's outward symptoms sometimes, not all the time. You and God are the only people who know if you have a coveting problem. This is a heart problem. And it expands way beyond material things. It's, it definitely can be material, but it can also be people. He said, don't covet your neighbor's wife. 
Don't covet your neighbor's stuff. Don't covet your neighbor. Like, stop looking around and wishing you had something more. Wishing you had something different. You are supposed to be content with what God has blessed you with. With what you have worked for. You are not supposed to have what somebody else worked for. Okay? So, we have a tendency to minimize these things. But we would love to electrocute a murderer. But they're in the same list of commandments. And yet in our lives, we are adding and we are taking away. We are making something sin that, quite frankly, are not in there. Um, there's a lot of things that are in there. And there's a lot of things. And this is why you have to seek out your own salvation. You have to listen to the Lord. I wanted to give you another example about, okay. So in light of, I don't know, I, maybe you're aware, but like a very famous actor died recently. And he had an ongoing public battle with addiction okay and this is what he said he said i can't have one drink he battled um alcoholism and he also battled an opioid addiction but he said i can't have one drink because one drink for me is enough to say like i can't have one and not spiral into back into my addiction okay now i know you're like well what are you talking about why what does this have to do with that because i'm talking about adding and taking away from the word of God. When we, and this came up in my Sunday school class like a week and a half ago. God has given us everything that we need to please him, to live for him, and to make it to heaven. It's in the word. These personal things that we have are just that. They are personal. And no, I'm not in any way going in the drinking route. But what I wanted to show you with this example, whether it's a good or bad example, I don't know. But I'm just going to tell you that there are people on the planet that can have one drink and they don't become alcoholics. Do I drink? No. Do I think drinking is a good thing to do? I do not. And there's like tons of data, research, and just common sense to me that lets me know that I just don't want to consume alcohol in any way, shape, form, or fashion. And that's my choice. And I feel like I have scripture for my life that, that would support that being a wise decision for my mind and my body and my spirit. Okay? But my point is, what this man is not capable of handling, another person may be and not slide into addiction and not have to go to rehab and not lose their life and not whatever. So, I use that example and you might come at me for that one. Because I used a substance that most would debatably say that Christians should not consume alcohol. I agree, but I'm not here to argue that point. But what I am saying is when you're starting to add things to the word of God. And you start to point out other people's lives in their life. Like things that they do that you don't choose to do. Or that's not how you think whatever. You have to be very careful. Because he warns against people that add to his word. That you're just as guilty if you add stuff to his word. You are just as guilty as the people who omit things. And both of those people are severely punished. Because God doesn't need you or me to talk for him and to add or take away things. Like whatever he gave us is sufficient. And it is our job to have a relationship with him on a one-on-one -on -one level. So that we are able to distinguish his voice. Because we are all individuals. And there are some things that some of us cannot handle. That our neighbor could. There are some things other people might can partake in. And I'm not talking about sin. I am talking about adding and taking away to the word of God. Which gets to me in the land of opinion. That's where we're headed. And I also respectfully would say. I think that is a huge turn off for people who want to be in church. And want to have a relationship with God. And want to affiliate with religious organizations of any kind. When people begin adding things to the word and claiming it as word and, and people don't find it in the word and they don't have a conviction about that. The Lord has not dealt with them about that because they might not need that to be dealt with. Like God has them on a different path. They have a different personality or whatever. So I guess I just wanted to warn me and I want to warn you. If you have a tendency to do that, I'm just saying be careful. Because there, I only took three scriptures. There's more than that in there. And obviously, if God thought it was important enough to give to us to say, Hey, you better make sure that you don't walk around and add stuff to my word. Y'all, 
it, the addition really makes me sad. The omission is terrible too, because what God said he meant. The addition though, to me, excludes people. When you start adding things to God's word and you start telling people, well, you have to do this to get to heaven, or you have to do this to get to heaven, or you have to do this to live right, or you have to do this. And God doesn't, did not tell them that. It's such dangerous ground because I do believe there are people all throughout history who have turned away from the Lord for things that he never said. They have turned away from God because of things he never said. Somebody else said them. And they were speaking for God. And I have read the Bible enough to know that when people speak for God and he didn't say it, Good things are not going to happen. So, read the word. Really read the word. This is another plug. I'm done. I know I'm going over, but I was short yesterday. But here's another plug. Read the word for yourself. You have to open your Bible. You have to open your Bible. You cannot show up to any church that you go to. I don't care what religion you are. I don't care who your preacher is. I don't care. You cannot go to church and only get what's coming across the pulpit. You cannot do that. You have got to go home and open your Bible and pray for God to reveal to you what he means in his word and what he wants for your life. And you've got to read your Bible. I have to read the word. I have to hide the word in my heart. I have to have it. It is not somebody else's job to read the Bible for me and then to tell me what it says. That is my job. I am an adult. And I if I'm going to go to heaven, and I am, it will be because me and God know each other and I read his word. So I am begging you to read the word. And when you read it, don't add anything to it. And don't omit anything. Because both of those things are dangerous territory. And pray when you read the word. And ask God to talk to you. And he will. And when he does... Keep it to yourself. <laughs> He's talking to you. He's talking to me. Unless he says, hey, go tell so-and-so. Blah. And let, You know, I'm not getting into that. That's between you and the Lord. <sighs> but that's dangerous territory, y'all. And I was reading the scripture today, and this is what I turned to, and I wanted to bring it to you. Let's stay in the word. It's got to be the word. It has to be God's word. We have to stay in the word. I don't want to be anywhere else anyway. Because anywhere outside of his word is in the land of opinion. It's in the land of just craziness. Like, God is God. And God is the word. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. I don't need to add anything to God. And I don't need to take anything away from him either. Let's get in the word. See you tomorrow.